Hello, and in this tutorial, what we're going to do is look at um, taking some motion capture data and applying it to a character uh, within Maya. Now, Motion Builder can do this in more detail or with more flexibility, um, but this can be done inside Maya, and that's what we're going to demonstrate inside this tutorial, okay? So what we have is I've set up a scene, okay, and in this scene I've got my motion capture data. Uh, this is an FBX file that was captured on our Vicon system. And I also have a rigged character. So this is a character with a um, skeletal uh, uh, joint system, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to bring in the motion capture data first. So I'm going to go import and bring in this motion capture data first, okay? Uh, just click a little, wait a little while while it brings it in. Okay, great. And what we have is um, effectively we just have um, uh, a series of joints uh, that are connected together with some motion applied to it. And you can see if I scrub this through, you can see the motion that we've captured here. Okay. Uh, now, just going to look in the outliner just to get a better idea of what it is that we're looking at here, because you'll see that we've got lots of locators and other information as well. We don't necessarily want all of that information. Um, so, um, so really the information that we want is uh, 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 the system is just the cameras that were used to pick up the actual, to capture the motion. Um, I'm not sure what the unlabeled markers are. I think this was uh, some markers that were at the side of the motion capture volume and nothing to do with the character at the time. They're just here. And then there was a virtual camera as well. So there's a number of elements in the scene that we're not interested in. What we're interested in is the character here, okay? And that's this bit here. But even then, we've got all these sort of locators here as well. Now, each of these locators, if I just open this up, you'll see that we've got uh, uh, we've got these uh, a whole series of locators here. Uh, and these locators basically are the positions of the tracking points that we used to track the actor when we did this. Um, uh, and um, But again, we're not really interested in this. What we want is the joint data. And the joint data is inside this solving folder here, okay? Again, this convention really applies to the Vicon system and the data you get from the Vicon system. But you can see that here we've got the solving, uh, the solve joint, uh, the joint, you've got this solving folder here. We open this up, you can see here our, our joint. So this is the information that we are, we're actually interested in, okay? Great. What I want to do then is I want to take these, these, this joint, um, uh, the movement of these joints and apply it to a character. Okay. In order to do that, I need Maya to understand something about these joints. Um, I need Maya to understand what body part these joints are associated with. At the moment, to Maya, they're just a series of joints. Okay, It has no understanding of them in relation to a human body. So we can do that through the human IK system. If you haven't got this interface open, you should be able to click human IK at the side here, or just go Windows, uh, Animation Editors, Human IK. And what we're going to do is we're going to define a character uh, and, uh, based on this motion capture data. Okay, so we're going to go create character. I'm going to rename the character mocap because that is more logical. Okay, great. So I've renamed the character mocap because uh, this is our mocap character. Um, and then what I want to do is at the moment, it, so then what I want to do is associate the bones of this character with this character definition. So what I can do is I could just select these bones and go right click uh, to assign it. In fact, I just did that. I didn't want to do that. Let's just do that again. So I could select the bones and just go right click and assign the bones. Okay. And go through the entire skeleton to do that. But actually, um, the way that Vicon names the bones actually matches um, the way the human IK system does it. So we can actually simply select these hips. Make sure that your character is in a T-pose, okay, before doing this, okay. So make sure your character is in a T-pose. Select the hips. That basically selects the entire uh, joint system. And then I can just then go, uh, I can then go click uh, and then just go, uh, template human IK and just go, um, uh, I can just go OK. All right. Um, so what's happening is uh, we're saying to, uh, uh, what's happening is Maya's just using a skeleton definition, like a mapping system to map the names that each of these joints have, uh, to use the names that each of these joints have to map these joints to our uh, character definition 
inside of here. OK, so what this so now Maya actually understands what parts of our character are linked. OK, all right. So this character definition, it feels like nothing's really happening here. But what this character definition is doing is it's giving Maya an understanding of our character. OK, now, um, if you if you have like multiple characters in your scene and you do this step, there is a potential for the system to get confused. Uh, you know, mapping um, uh, bones of the wrong character to the character definition. OK, um, so I find it easier to do it with just one character in the scene. Um, uh, that That's my suggestion. Um, uh, you can do it with multiple characters. I think if you do, if you if you work out your, if you organise your namespaces, you can get away with that. But I think that's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Okay, so now Maya has an understanding of our character. We can now take the these joints and apply them to another character. Okay, so I'm going to go file, import, and I'm going to bring in our blue dude character. Okay, we go import here. Here's our blue dude character. I'm just going to go uh, view. Um, uh, I'm going to sorry. I'm going to turn hardware texturing on so we can see the texture we've got on there. And I'm just going to go X-ray joints. So you can see that we've got a rigged character here, and there's no motion on this character at all. Okay, brilliant. Right. Okay. So now what we want to do is um uh yeah so now what we want to do is um i i want i want to actually um yeah in order to kind of move the uh data from here to here uh, from this uh, set of joints to this set of joints um what i need is uh yeah i can just select the blue dude character here okay and then just tell it to follow mocap, okay? And you'll see that what it's gonna do is it's gonna map, can you see, it's mapping. So all I've done is I've, I've uh, in my human IK view, I can pick out which character I, I wanna work with. So I've just picked out the blue dude character, that's the character we've imported, and told it to use the mocap character as a source, okay? All right, excellent. And you can see that we've got that as a source of data, okay? And it's basically applied that. But at the moment, that data is not on the blue dude character. If I switch that back to none, you'll see that the blue dude character isn't moving at all, okay? All right, so what I actually need to do is I need to bake this, okay, data onto the blue dude character skeleton, okay? So I've switched the blue dude character back to following the mocap as a source. And in this menu here, in our little Vitruvian man menu, menu here, I'm gonna go bake and I'm gonna bake to skeleton. Okay, here we go. So you'll see it's gonna go through this process and it's gonna bake that to uh, a skeleton. This takes a little while, so I'm just gonna go and do a pause while it's doing that. Okay, so now what you'll see is uh, the bake process has been complete. And what uh, Maya has done is it switched the source back to none. Okay, uh, and if I scrub this, you'll see that my blue dude character is animating. Okay, so what, what that means is the actual, this motion has now been baked onto the joint system of the blue dude character. Uh, what that means now is if I go and, so for example, if I go back to the mocap character and just tell it to, to um, go to start, so just freeze the mocap character, you'll see that that um, this blue dude character is no longer relying on following the, this 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 mocap character. Indeed, I could just now export this blue dude character. I could delete this mocap character. I don't need it anymore. The actual motion is now baked onto the blue dude character itself. Okay, so I can now just export this blue dude character and. Um, um, uh, and put it into my game uh, uh, or into my scene, whatever I want to do with that. OK, so in the next set of tutorials, what we're going to do is look at how to actually uh, work with and edit this motion if we want to. OK, uh, the important thing to understand is that the how Maya was using the character definition 
uh, uh, in order to do that. So, the, so Maya needed to understand what each of these joints were in order to map the data from one joint system to another joint system. Okay, so um, joins for part two uh, in order to see how to edit this data.